Good evening, church. Welcome to Refuel. So excited that you guys are tuning in with us here. Uh, we hope that you are encouraged. Uh, we all just have so much to be thankful for. Um, let's let's uh, let's go to our God now and uh, just just thank Him for how wonderful He is and for what He's done in each and every one of our lives. Um, Father, we we come before you now to to exalt you, to worship you, to recognize who you are, uh, to recognize all you've done in our lives. Uh, please just open our eyes, wake us up, Lord, and let us be filled with with gratitude and help us to just see you uh, as you are, Father. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for calling us your children. Thank you for uh, redeeming us. Uh, so as we as we sing to you now and as we hear from your word, just may our hearts be uh, encouraged and strengthened alongside our, our brothers and sisters um, across this community. Lord, we love you. We give you this time in Jesus' name. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It wasn't mine to Till I met you I was breathing but not Failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness into your glorious day. always with us no matter what we're going through we get to rejoice in his presence we get to come to him for help he's our father he's our god the one we can we can always always depend upon Foes are many, they rise against me, but I will hold my ground. I will not fear the 
is on the way. Surround 
surrounded by your glory would will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or in all of you be still will i stand in your presence to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak it oh all surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or in all of you be still will i stand in your presence to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak it all i can only imagine yeah I can only imagine that day when we can be in your presence evermore for all eternity lord thank you for your goodness thank you for your love your power that's constantly on display lord let us uh, just receive your word with gladness now in jesus name we pray amen mm. amen well, welcome, church, to uh, Wednesday Night Refuel, and uh, we're blessed uh, to have you join us this evening. Uh, we, that's our heart and prayer, is that uh, today you would be refilled uh, with the presence of the Lord, refilled with his scripture, and uh, we thank you that you're taking the time and uh, searching him and his word with us, and so we pray that your time would be blessed today, and we know it will because it's the, it's the word of God, and um, it doesn't return void. And so, um, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 1, Psalm chapter 1. We're going to be covering uh, this psalm to, tonight. And um, this psalm is real near and dear to my heart. Um, when I was in mid-high, uh, our senior pastor had uh, a little young men's study at his house, and uh, he'd pop popcorn, and we'd go over the scriptures together. And I remember I was so excited to be around all these other young men and to be mentored by my senior pastor. And um, But I was in total shock and awe and in disbelief when he said, hey, we are going to memorize this entire chapter of the Bible. And my jaw just dropped to the floor. I mean, it's a whole chapter. And you're thinking, it's only six verses. But I'm thinking, yeah, but it's a whole chapter. Chapter. Um, and so, uh, you know, believe it or not, we were able to memorize this whole chapter. And, and, um, and it's really been something that uh, as I've grown in the Lord, as I've been walking with the Lord, um, the Lord always brings me back to this psalm and has kept me on the straight and narrow for many years. And um, I pray it will be a blessing to you today. Maybe it might be your first time studying this. Um, and um, if it is, it'll be a big blessing for you. Um, and so, uh, we're going to look and we're going to go through here, uh, you know, thinking about the times in which we're living, you know, oftentimes difficulties can force us to uh, rediscover what's really important in our lives and to kind of prioritize our life accordingly. And um, studying Psalm 1 is a great way to refocus uh, our lives on the Lord. Uh, the, the psalm starts out and it says, blessed is the man. And um, I, I love that word blessed because who doesn't want to be blessed? You, you ask people, you know, hey, do you want to be, you want a blessing? Do you want to be blessed? You ask your kids, do you want a blessing? And they're like, yes, yes. Who doesn't want to be blessed? Um, but this is a, a, this is a conditional statement. It says, blessed is the man or oh, the joys of those 
who do these things, who walk in these ways. And if you want to be blessed, if you want that abounding joy in your life, maybe you're lacking that right now. You don't feel blessed and you don't feel joyful. Well, listen to these words um, from Psalm 1. It doesn't say that every man is blessed. It says the man is blessed who uh, basically responds appropriately to the Lord. And so look at this verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And so right away, we see that the blessed man is practicing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the, what he's doing is he is practicing self-control. You look at all these different um, words that are used here. He, he doesn't walk, he doesn't stand, he doesn't sit in these places. He's controlling himself. And uh, that's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Life is full of temptation. It's full of ways to indulge in, e- e- in evil desires. Uh, sin is such a liar. You, you know that. Um, it, it makes us uh, feel like we're missing out on something if we're not participating in it. But, uh, w- you know, when it's really wanting to steal something from us, um, it promises to make us feel better. But in the end, uh, we end up um, feeling guilt and shame. Uh, it, it promises to get rid of all of our problems if we'll just indulge in it. But when we wake up the next day or when we're finished with that sin, th- that, that th- our problems are still there. And oftentimes they're worse than when w- they began, when, they, when we started. And, uh, and, but notice that the blessed man has control self-control over his body. He doesn't run towards sin. It says he doesn't walk in the advice uh, of evil counsel. Uh, You might say that he doesn't allow himself uh, to be pressured into doing things that are wrong. Uh, he, he's not a people pleaser in that sense. He, even though, you know, I mean, we all, I think for the most part, really uh, cherish those thoughts and ideas that people have about us. Nobody wants to be um, the person that's looked down upon or that's not cool or whatever. But, you know, the blessed man doesn't care about what people think about him. He cares about what God thinks about him. Um, he, he doesn't find his worth in what people think. He finds his worth in what God thinks. Um, in, in other words, he has self-control over his thought life. I mean, what is advice? It's those thoughts is that ad- that counsel that comes in and we have to take those thoughts captive and we have to say, okay, is this pleasing to the Lord or isn't it? And those things that aren't pleasing to the Lord need to be done away with. And that's what this blessed man does. He says, hey, you know, all this advice or counsel of the ungodly, I'm not going to listen to. And furthermore, he's, it says that he doesn't stand in sin. He doesn't stand, he doesn't stand in sin. Sin does not have a grip on the blessed man's life. He won't allow it to take root in his life. Sin is really serious to the blessed man. He sees it as an offense to God. He sees it as a, a opposing God, and he doesn't want any of that in his life. And, and so he has self-control over his body, his actions, if you will. He, he's, not, he's not going where he shouldn't be going. Uh, there's that, <clears throat> uh, maybe you grew up in a Christian home and maybe your parents or your Sunday school teacher used to sing you know, to you a song that said something along the lines of, oh, be, be careful little feet where you go. And it would kind of repeat that phrase a few times and it would, said, and it would say, because the Father up above is looking down on us. And, and so be careful, little feet, where you go. And, and this blessed man is caring about what his heavenly father sees in his life. And so he's being careful where he goes. Um, he also refuses to sit in, in places of, of, of scorn, of, of, of being scornful, of sitting in that, in that seat of the scornful. Uh, he refuses to sit in a place where he might elevate himself up above and at the expense of others. He has, if you will, self-control over his tongue, and he thinks before he speaks. Uh, how about you? Are you, are you practicing self-control regularly? Uh, are you controlling your thoughts, your body, your tongue? Uh, and if not, maybe there's, maybe there's 
a lack there, and that lack is the Lord. And uh, if you call out to the Lord, he will fill those gaps. He will help you with that. Uh, it's called in Galatians, one of the fruits of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit of God. And as we ask the Lord to come into our lives, those things are naturally produced, or should I say supernaturally produced in our lives. And, um, and so you can call out to him and ask him for help in those areas if you're struggling there. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 12, 35, he said, a good man out of the good treasure in his heart produces good things, but an evil man um, brings forth evil things because he's got this evil treasure in his life, in his heart, and that's what's coming out. Uh, the secret word here is treasure that Jesus says, and, and what is near and dear to our hearts, what's near and dear to your heart this evening uh, what is most important to you? And that's what is eventually going to come out. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, Jesus said. And so this is exactly what the psalm, uh, psalmist is going to, is, is going in, is where he's going in verse two, is what's important. What is What's important to this blessed man? We see all these things that he's not doing, that he's choosing not to walk in, but really what has his heart? What's at the core? What makes this guy tick? And so look here at, at Psalm 1 verse 2. It says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And so here's the answer. Here's what's near and dear to this man's life. Here's the secret, is that he stays close to the Lord. Um, it says that his delight is in the law of the Lord. What he cherishes, what he desires, what, what is his inmost uh, treasure in his life, and that is the law of the Lord, the commands of God, the instructions of the Most High. And we have that. It's right here in this book. And are we cherishing that? Are we loving that? Are we enjoying that? Do we spend time in, God, in God's word to get to know him, to understand him, to understand his will for our lives? We get asked a lot of, uh, of times, you know, hey, um, what's the will of God for my life? And, and you, we just simply turn him to, the, to, the, to God and his word and said, have you been reading this? Because this is how you know God's will for your life. You got to know this book. He has left this as instructions for us. I love that in mid -high, we always used to have this same Saying that the word Bible means uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. And, and that's, that's uh, really the Lord's heart for us, is he wants this to be our instruction manual for everyday living. And, um, and how much does this blessed man in Psalm 1, how much does he love God and his word? Well, look at this. And in, in verse 2, it says that he loves it so much that he meditates on it day and night. And, and so we're not talking about when we say meditate, we're not talking about what you might think with some seance or some weird thing where you cross your legs and you, know, you hold your fingers a certain way and you just hum or something. Um, this is a, a real deep and interesting meaning word. It means to consider, to ponder, to immerse your soul in the word of God. Uh, I always like to describe it like this. I mean, I have uh, a couple grills at home, and I love grilling meat. It's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, but one of the things I like to do before I do that is to take the meat that I'm uh, making. Fajitas is one of our favorite things. So we'll take a flank steak or a skirt steak, and we'll season it and oil it and all that stuff. We'll put it in a bag, and we'll marinate it. What's the purpose of, of marinating it? It's that you want the marinade in the meat and the meat in the marinade. Uh, and, and that is uh, how I like to think about this. Uh, this word meditate, and, and when, he, when it says he meditates um, on the, the law of God day and night, is that um, he is um, marinating his mind in the word of God, marinating his mind in the scriptures. And so if you want to be blessed, then search the Lord and his word, and um, you, will, you will find yourself uh, in this category of being this blessed man. Psalm 119.9 says, how can a young man keep his way pure? What's the answer for that? And he answers himself and he says, by keeping it according 
to your word. And so the, we have these instructions of how to, how to live a holy and pure life. Psalm 119.11 says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so we have these instructions on how we are, are to live and how we're to please the Lord. But are our thoughts consumed with the things of God? Um, are, are our actions a proper demonstration of God's love toward others? Um, are our words laced with grace? Uh, you know, and here's the, here's the honest truth is that you can't give what you don't have. And if, if you are unable to uh, practice self-control, if you're unable to um, be able to share God's love with other people in, a, in, a, in an amazing and great way, um, then uh, there's probably something lacking, and that is the source, uh, that fountain of living water that Jesus promised to his followers. Uh, you know, could it be that you're not really walking with the Lord? Could it be that, you, that the Lord's calling out to you and says, hey, I want to come into your life. I want to make your heart my home. And for you to be able to experience these things like self-control and be able to experience what it means to be a blessed, uh, to have a blessed life. But you can't give what you don't have. You've got to go to the source. And that source is Jesus Christ. Uh, if our lives are not consumed with what God's word says, then we're not allowing it to penetrate every fiber of our being. Then, then we're not going to be able to experience that power and that freedom that this blessed man has in, in verse 1 of being able to say no to these things that, uh, uh, that, that our flesh wants, that these sinful desires in our heart wants. We're not going to be able to overcome them if we're not um, being saturated with God and his word. Jesus said in Luke 4, 4, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And, and the Lord's word is incredibly important in our lives. And here's the result. Verse 3. It says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And so here's the end result for the blessed man's life, is that everything he does will prosper. And the Bible is full of metaphors and, and word pictures that help us grasp a concept or, or a principle uh, by using things that are, that are familiar to the reader. And so in this case, the psalmist compares a, a, the blessed man to a tree that's planted by, by rivers of water. And living in the desert in New Mexico, I mean, we understand what that means, right? We understand that, hey, in order for a tree to survive, it needs water, which we don't have a whole lot of here. And where's, all, where's, where's the most majority of our trees here in the Albuquerque area is, is in the bosque, near the river, is where the trees are flourishing. And, and uh, the, the psalmist says, hey, the blessed man is like a tree planted by rivers of water. And, and what is a tree planted by rivers of water? Well, it yields its fruit and season. It's strong. It's grounded. It's not, it's not going anywhere, even in our high winds. It's not, it's not going to be uh, being uprooted. And the, this, as the scripture says, it's, he's going to be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf shall also not wither. This blessed man is, is not only going to be strong, but he's also going to bear fruit in its season, um, in his season. Uh, you know, and this is the will of God for all of us, that just like a, a fruit tree planted by water is going to bring forth fruit, produce, it's actually going to do something, that that's God's will for your life as well. Uh, check this out. John 15 verses 5 and 8 Said, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. And he goes on to say, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And so that's God's will for your life, is to bear much fruit and to have that abounding uh, influence of the Holy Spirit working in your life, that you'd feed off of his word like a tree feeds off the stream of the river of water, and that you would be strong, that you would be grounded. And 
that you would spend time with Jesus? You know, do you want a blessed life? Do you want a prosperous life? Do you want to have a fruitful life? Then you need to be spending time with Jesus. You need to be in his word. And uh, there's another blessing here, you know, for uh, other than producing fruit for the Lord. It says, whose leaf, whose leaf shall not wither. Uh, now, leaves on a, on a tree don't last forever, but uh, this one's leaves do. Uh, those who trust in Jesus Christ, they will not only produce good deeds and fruit for the Lord in this life, but they shall remain forever in eternity with the Lord. And I love this last little um, phrase in, in verse 3 where it says, whatever this blessed man does, whatever he does, prospers. Uh, what an amazing thing. What a blessing. Uh, because he is a man who... Uh, does not uh, the, do the things in verse 1, uh, because he's not walking the counsel of the wicked, standing in the path of sinners, or sitting in, in the seat of the scornful. He uh, is a man of integrity. He can be trusted. He is faithful. And uh, Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor than silver and gold. And so there's this good name for the Lord that's to be cherished above all else. And as we see, uh, when we have that kind of a name, whatever, whatever we do for the Lord prospers. It's not what other people think that matters. It's what God thinks. And we need to be constantly asking ourselves, you know, is what I'm doing, is uh, how I'm acting, is what I'm saying, is this pleasing to the Lord? We need to be people that are saturated in God's word. Fall in love with him. Be in his word constantly. And, and, and let the Lord work in your life. Uh, for those who seek the Lord, their, there's, their blessings will abound. Hebrews 11.6 says, For without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Are you seeking him diligently today? Are you finding him in, this, in the passages of Scripture? Is our Bibles collecting dust on the shelf? And then there's a, there's a contrast here. We'll go through this quickly. In verse 4 through 5, it says, The ungodly are not so. They're like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly will not stand in the, in the judgment or sinners in the congregation of the righteous. And, and that word chaff there is, it's kind of a farming term, you know, with wheat uh, on the outside of a, gr of a grain of wheat is, uh, is what's called chaff. And it's kind of the husk that, that grows around um, the, the kernel of, of wheat, if you will. In Luke 6, it says that Jesus' disciples were walking through a field and the disciples were grabbing these heads of grain and they were rubbing it in, in their hands. And the idea is that after you do that, the, 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 the husk or the chaff kind of pulls away from the, the kernel and that you can blow on it and then you can eat. All that's left is the kernels of wheat and you can pop those in your mouth and, and chew them. Um, and... and the whole idea is that, hey, chaff's not worth anything. And then it's also being, it's able to be blown around like the wind in contrast to the blessed man who's like a tree planted by rivers of water. And so really the wicked man has no self-control and just indulges in everything and goes wherever the wind blows him. And there's uh, definitely not a blessing there. It says that there, the ungodly will not stand in the, in, in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Revelation 20 verse 15 uh, confirms this. It says, And anyone not found in the book of life was cast out into the lake of fire, which the Bible calls the second death. Uh, Revelation 21, 27 says that nothing evil will be able to enter into the new Jerusalem. And so there's, there's this... This, this question of who are you today? Are you the blessed man who is walking according to the Lord, who cherishes the things of God, who's searching for him in the scriptures? Or are you uh, the wicked man who is just being driven and tossed here and there, led by their emotions, indulging in whatever they want, and will one day not be able to stand in the Lord because there's nothing to stand on? You haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. And here's the final outcome in verse 6. It says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Do you know if the Lord knows you today? Do you know if he knows your ways? Do you know if he's protecting you? Have you given your life to Jesus? Uh, maybe the better question is, you know, do you know him 
from experience, not just something where you went forward at a church service someday or, or said a prayer at one point, but where you, are, where you know your God, your heavenly Father, because you're spending time with him daily and, and consistently. He's constantly on your mind. His word's constantly in your heart. John 6, 35, it says that uh, uh, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Do you find yourself unsatisfied today? Then it might be because you haven't gone to the bread of life himself. Have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good, as Psalm 34, 8 says? Psalm 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And if you're hungering and thirsting for those good things of God that he wants for your life, then you will be filled. If you search for the Lord with all of your heart and you let him be that foundation for everything that you're doing. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for those who have joined us uh, this evening. Lord, I pray that you would reach their hearts tonight, Lord, and that they would be able to examine their lives and that they'd be able to ask that question of, um, are they really walking with you or are they, have they been neglecting you? Maybe they don't know you at all. And Lord, for those that don't know you, I pray that they would seek you right now and that they'd pray a simple prayer like this in asking you to come into their life by saying, God, I need you. Come into my life, change me, and help me to thirst for the things of you, to be in your word, to be saturated by you, and to have you constantly on my mind. In Jesus' name, amen. May God continue to work in your life. May you hunger and thirst after him. And may this be an encouragement to you to cherish the God who loves you because he, is, he has great things for you, has wonderful blessings for you. Um, if you would just walk with him, be with him, and have his word constantly in your heart and in your mind. God bless you.